Hi everyone, today we're looking at the tier or deer challenge on Hack the Box, which is a retired reverse engineer challenge, quite old, very old, and um, it's in the easy category. So we're working our way through from easy to insane. Um, challenge description says find the username and password and put them in the flag format, Hack the Box, with the username and password. So we download the files and extract them. Um, first of all, check the file type. We have a 32-bit executable again for uh, Windows. So any debugging, really, we're going to want to try and do them inside there if we want to avoid trying to use Wine. So let's check the strings on it quickly. Okay, so um, instantly looking at this, we know that we're going to be able to... It's a .NET application, so we're going to be able to decompile this code and get get back to our original form which is good so we can see that there's some encryption happening don't see any passwords obvious passwords that would be sticking out to us and uh, I would be very surprised if there were if there was so let's go over to uh, in my case the commando VM here where we also have a copy of the binary and let's see if we can analyze it Typically when we are working with executables in reverse engineering challenges, we'll want to disassemble it in Ghidra or Ida Pro. So if we open this up, you'll see here Microsoft.NET assembly. So it's not just a standard executable file. And although we can have a look at some things in here, we can see here we've got our main. We can have a look. There's a check here. So we have a, a string, an array of characters, beginning with QWERTY. And then some operations currently end, not able to decompile that. Um, another array of characters in here. But the best thing for us to do, because we um, because it's .NET executable, we can actually decompile decompile it in DNSpy. So because it's a 32-bit executable, we'll open that in the 86. And you'll see here that we can go and have a look at the structure of the executable. We have our P section here with our um, different sections and the, the headers. What we're interested in is the actual code. So the code here, you have the program and then we have our login form with all of the functions there, the encrypted, etc. So let's have a look at the login form and see if we can reverse engineer this and try and get the username and password. In fact, we've not actually even run the application. Let's let's run the application. <laughs> so we'll try and run this with admin, admin, and we get wrong credentials. Let's try it again. Okay. So we can see here in our login form we have this variable declared poof123 hash, which is called aura or aura. Uh, we have this pepper variable sets 10 and then we have an array of decimals as well so we can go through and we can have a look at each of the different variables and see what they contain we can go and have a look at each function individually so you have functions here like the enc encrypted 10 which has an array of variables so kind of like the you see there the qwerty one this is like what we saw in ida pro so you've got check one two three four um, and you can see it's t it's taken it's creating a string using some of the elements from this and the square it's using a square root as well to pick square root of two to pick um, a character as well and then it's returning check three so we can click that and then go and have a look at check three as well which is ret which is doing the same kind of operation and then returning check four. Um, so we could go through and we could try and manually work out what's going on there, but it would be easier for us to potentially go through and debug it. So if we start off at where where we want to, it's best to trace our way back from what we want to happen here. So we we have here, oops, um, be careful what you click on in DNSpy. We have here the, the message box correct, which is what we're looking to achieve. So what's the condition to make it happen? This dot username needs to equal this dot o, and this dot check one s needs to return true. And this dot check one is gonna get a bit of a string. It's gonna send that string to check two, and etc. Um, 
Now, what's actually interesting, if you go through, if you note through the um, these checks, it takes in string one, string two. I can't actually see in any cases where it's it's used. It seems to do this operation. We get S three, but the result of the previous check just doesn't seem to come through, and there doesn't seem to be a. So it looks like we only need to con we're only really actually concerned about the final check returning true which I guess would be this dot check um, and that's going to return this value here if so it's going to make sure yeah it's it's just going to return that this value so let's let's um rather than manually going through and trying to see what's going on let's go and um set a breakpoint at the this check. So if we hit F9 here to set a breakpoint and then start it, we'll just put in A B C D E F username and password. And you can see we've hit the breakpoint here. So now we have these local variables which we can have a look at. And we're interested in seeing if this dot username first our well, first condition is does this dot username match this dot O so let's have a look at this dot username and you can see here the username is actually def so we assigned the username as abc so actually the username field is the password field so it's checking does does what we entered in as the password match this dot o so let's set let's watch this variable we can add watch just so we can keep an eye on it as we progress through the different checks um and we'll do that with any interesting variables. Another one is obviously this dot o. So you see this dot o is equal roi uh, r r o i w exclamation mark at hash. Let's um, watch that as well. But now we we know if we set our password to this value, then this first condition is going to match true, and we'll get the correct as long as we essentially get the username because we know that this is the password. So let's um let's see if we can trace trace through that a bit. So we've now got a breakpoint here. Um let's see what S is equal to as well. S wasn't something that we we input. So let's go back here and you can see S is equal to that value which was our or aura um reversed. You can see that string s equals this multiply this dot aura by minus nine, and that's resulted in a reverse string. So let's watch this as well. Add watch, and let's um, set another breakpoint. So we know it's going to go and do this check. So we could set a breakpoint here. Hit F9, and let's continue. Oh, um, okay. We need to restart the program because I didn't actually have the value in correctly there. Uh, what I should have done, I'll show you what I should have done actually. Because we'd already put in A, B, C, D, E, F, um, it, we it's checking this dot username equals this dot O. So if we go and have a look, this dot username does not equal this dot O. So we should have taken this value, pasted it there. And then we've now set it in memory while it's while it's running. We've we've set this condition to be true. So this is something you can do to kind of trick programs as well. If you you know if you're going through debugging. In our case, we just we don't want we don't want just just want to say you know it equals true because it's just going to give us a message box showing correct. So we do need to kind of go through the program. But um, in terms of meeting this condition, in in setting that, we should now be able to continue, and it's now continue through to check one and we have this string being created so without manually going through and trying to see what what that equals equals let's um, step over that so we've just stepped over that line and let's see what s2 is and you see it's r o i w let's um, watch that string and let's go to our check 2 do the same thing 
and hit continue. Okay, S has disappeared, that's fine. And um, let's step over and see what we've got for S3. And you can see S3 is the exact same value. So again, in looking at these functions, these checks, each time we have this return check and it passes in the array and it passes in S3, last time it passed in the, the array in S2, it passes them in but it doesn't actually use these anywhere. So essentially this is, is really doing nothing. We don't need to be doing this. You can see this is equal to the same value again. Um, what we do want to do is go and have a look at check 3. Check 3 is going to be exactly the same. It's taking, it's creating S3, but it's not actually using S1 or S2. So let's have a look at check four. Exactly the same. So it's just going to keep returning the same um, variables. And then this check, if we go to this check, this is actually the final one. So you see here, it's 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 taking this array, and now it's actually doing something. So let's set a breakpoint here and hit continue. This is our breakpoint and let's step over that so we're at this instruction now which is saying return this text box user dot text is equal to this dot aa and um that's that's part of it and then it's also saying array zero equals array 22 so let's have a look at those we have this array here array zero is q and array 22 is also q and the, this text this uh, text box user dot text is equal to this dot aa so let's go and have a look at the variables we have this dot aa and it says pif p i p h let's set a watch and step over the instruction we'll step over it's returning from it's returning each of those checks and then it gets here and says this check dot s um, this check one was that going to show up here uh, let's try and step over I've got a feeling it's just going to go yeah okay it just jumped to the incorrect um, that's fine. We've we we know what we know what this returned anyway. So let's now let's stop debugging. And what were the variable? Okay, let's start again just so I can get these variables. Um, let's just say a a. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. No, the variable was. Yeah. Uh, this is it. Okay. So if you remember, this was our password because they named the username thing as the password, and then this was our username that we returned. So pif is our username. This is our password. So let's. Um, let's set this username equals the password and uh, okay an expected token okay let's just in fact let's just forget this we've got our username let's open up here our password was this and our username was pif hit login and there we go correct so we now have a username and password we can go ahead and submit those on hack the box in with the flag format I uh, hope you've enjoyed this this challenge and I went and I went through that okay. If you've got any questions or any comments, please leave them in the in the comment section. Thanks, bye.